Hello everyone, this is Tormuse, and I'm picking up where I left off in Doki Doki Storm. Uh, let's see, when we last left off, um, yeah, Yuri had a good day, hooray! You know, after after the super dark uh, uh, second episode, I seem, I seem to be having one episode per in-game day. I uh, didn't exactly plan it that way, but it seems to be seems to work out all right. Um, completely unrelated, well, sort of unrelated note. Uh, it, <laughs> I, I should mention um, the last two videos strangely got copyright claimed uh, for the music, despite the fact that it's Moonlight Sonata, uh, i.e., by Ludwig von Beethoven. Ah. Ludwig von Beethoven, the classical composer who died two centuries ago. This is obviously public domain. Um, I don't know why it got claimed. Um, one of them's by EMI, like, you know, major company. Um, they got a lot of nerve claiming uh, ad revenue from, uh, from someone who's been dead for 200 years. But um, yeah, um, I didn't copy. <laughs> I didn't copy EMI. <laughs> um, this is public domain. Um, weirdly, the first uh, the first video of uh, didn't get claimed. I don't, uh, it's not the kind of claim where they blocked it, but um, um, yeah, it, it, it uh, they claim ad review, which which I don't really care about, but I disputed it anyway, just because like. You know, how dare you uh, claim revenue on a dead guy? Um, but um, I just kind of want to stick it to them for that. So, but uh, but yeah, if it, if my if my YouTube channel suddenly implodes, probably because EMI retaliated or something. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I think they're they're a big company. They can <laughs> they can probably crush me if they want. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, I just want to get that out of the way up front before I start. Let's get back into it. <clears throat> When I wake up, it's the next morning. Oh, oh dear. I slept in my uniform. The last thing I remember is finishing my poem. I only intend to lie down for a moment. I must have been very tired. Or maybe the blood loss is still affecting me. I wonder how long it will take my body to replenish at normal, normal levels. That's probably a sign that I should have, ta have another big breakfast today. As for my uniform, this is precisely the kind of situation when I would normally change into the spare one, but obviously I don't have that option now. The prospect of going to school in it right now is unpleasant. It feels and smells filthy. I know rationally that it isn't that bad. I was only wearing it for a relatively short time. But the knowledge that I slept in it makes my skin crawl. Not for the first time, I wish I could shut off the part of my brain that dwells on these things and stop imagining how much skin oil and other residues have collected on it. I look at the clock. There isn't time to wash it and still avoid being late for school. I definitely don't want to miss two days of school in a row if I can help it. What about... I go to the closet and find the bottle of perfume again. <laughs> Can't at least improve my smell, anyway. I have no idea how much to use. I just spray my uniform all over. I'll worry about washing my uniform properly on the weekend when I have more time. That just leaves a decision of what knife to bring today. As I look over my knife rack, my mind drifts back to the events of yesterday and a smile creeps over my face. Attention, everyone. I'm making some changes to my life. Now that I have a friend... I I want to see if I can get through the day without you. Sorry. I hope you understand. Ugh, I'm talking to my knives again. Why do I keep doing that? I should just get ready for school. <clears throat> um, yeah, incidentally, that, that bit about getting uh, obsessed about the skin residue, or skin oils and residues and so on, um, that's sort of... Um, Based on that line she has in Act 2 about skin oils, I, I sort of imagine that Yuri's kind of obsessive compulsive. Um, kind of like myself, I um, I have a tendency to dwell on those things too, so I just, I can relate. So, I just sort of add that dimension in there. <clears throat> Your character. Anyway, moving on. My time at school makes me conscious of how frequently I reach into my bag. I didn't realize until today how often I compulsively touch the handles of my knives whenever I feel the need for reassurance. But I hold on to my thoughts and memories of my new friendship with Tormuse, and it helps me get through the day. I'm still feeling fairly good by the time I enter the literature club. The room is empty except for Sayuri in the seat at the front. Curiously, she doesn't greet me as she normally does. She doesn't even look up. She isn't even wearing her usual mask. She's letting her sadness show. Normally, I wouldn't trouble myself about it. I would just find an isolated seat and start reading my book. 
But today, the new me is going to do something different. I sit in the seat next to Sayuri. Sayuri, are you alright? Mask is replaced instantly. Hi, Yuri. I'm great, thanks. How are you? I wonder if I dare try to coax her into talking about how she's really feeling. I'm doing quite well, thank you. That's... She sniffs the air. Is that a new perfume? Uh, well, technically no, but I wanted to try something different today. Your mask falters. Are you wearing it for tour use? I... That honestly hadn't occurred to me. Would, would that be a bad thing? Oh, no, no, it's great that you want to get close to him. I'd like to see him and make as many friends as he can. Nothing would make me happier. The mask crumbles completely. I, I, I'm sorry, I, I should... Sorry. I think I'm supposed to cheer her up in a situation like this, but I'm not sure how to go about it. I, I know we've never really talked before, but if there's something troubling you, you can confide in me. Uh... If you want to. She makes a visible effort to recover her smile. That's really sweet of you, Yuri, but it's okay. It's just a little rain cloud. Rain cloud? Oh, of course. A metaphor. How very poetic of you. Ah, <laughs> oh, thanks. How long has the rain cloud been troubling you? Well, you know, sometimes rain clouds show up. It's okay, because they always go away eventually. There's a long pause. I'm still thinking about how to approach this. Maybe, maybe if I reveal a little about myself, it will help inspire her confidence in me. That idea sounds scary, but I remind myself that this is the new me. The new me has to be okay with doing scary things sometimes. Sayuri, if I may, I'd like to share something with you about myself. Something personal. I frequently feel depressed. I feel this way for a variety of reasons, partly because of how people treat me at school, partly because of other difficulties in my life. It's led me to read up, read up about it, and about mental health in general, and I've had occasion to wonder sometimes if you might be suffering from depression as well. Depression? Oh no, nothing like that. That makes it sound so serious. I just get sad sometimes, like everyone does. I'm sorry to hear you feel that way, though. I wish I could make you feel better. It's all right. I deal with it in my own way, even if I'm not very good at it. So, do you see a doctor about it, or what? Uh, no. I'm self-diagnosed. Then how do you know you have it? The signs are all there. From what I've read, it's the world's most common mental illness. Yeah? What's it like? Well... I'm half tempted to explain the pounding in my head that accompanies a storm, or the overpowering anxiety that makes me unable to interact with people in any normal way. There's so much wrong with me that if I started talking about my problems, I might never stop. But I try to focus on that one feeling. It feels like there's a struggle within me to even do mundane tasks, because I find it hard to muster the motivation to do them. There are things I want to do, but I can't bring myself to do them, and I can't really explain why. And sometimes it feels like there's no point in trying anymore, because I'll never be able to live like everyone else. But I still have to tr find some way to keep living, and find reasons to keep going, even when it feels pointless. I have to pause to try to control my breathing and the shakiness of my voice. I'm so anxious I can almost hear my heart pounding. And yet, at the same time, there's an undeniable sense of relief from finally sharing this. Yuri, I... I... I think I've had depression my whole life. I... I, I thought I was the only one who feels this way. But, but I don't get it. How can you be depressed? You're so smart and talented. So many reasons, too many to list right now. It isn't about intelligence, it's about emotions. If anything, intelligence just leads to overthinking, which makes the depression worse. How long have you been depressed? Uh... I can pinpoint the exact day it started. Quite a while, I suppose. <laughs> Foreshadowing, by the way. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I didn't know. I, I didn't know. If, if, if I was so worthless, maybe I could have done something to help. It's all right. If anything, I'm glad we found, it, found out about each other. Yeah, maybe 
Uh, maybe we can be depression buddies or something. Uh, is that something like being friends? Sure, Yuri. Friends. Just, just like you and Tormuse. Suddenly, she leans forward, face down the desk, and starts sobbing. I'm more than a little stunned. I, I don't know how to react. I helplessly watch her cry in her seat as she cradles her head in her arms. I, I should comfort her. I should reassure her. I should do anything but just sit here doing nothing. But I, I tentatively extend a shaking hand and put it on her shoulder. But it feels nothing like the contact with Tormius did. Am I doing it wrong? I, I don't know. Uh, but now that I've done it, it feels like it would be awkward to take a hand away. I, I still can't think of what to say. I feel like I'm messing things up. I, I may even have made her wor feel worse. I may have just lost my friend as soon as I gained her. I hear her murmuring something under her breath over and over again. It sounds like happy thoughts. <laughs> Finally, without moving her head, she reaches up and squeezes my hand. I'm sorry. She raises her head and starts rapidly wiping her tears away. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't mean for you to see me like this. I don't want anyone to worry about me. I just, I feel like I've barely been in control today. I even thought of leaving school early, but I didn't want to miss coming to literature club. Seeing friends usually keeps the rain clouds away for a little while. That's why I... That's why you invited Tormius to join the club? She grimaces and nods. He really means a lot to you, doesn't he? She nods again. And I thought that helping him make friends would make me happier, but it didn't work. I'm just feeling worse now. Yuri... Can I tell you a secret? Why not? It's never been this bad before. The rain clouds. They're just getting bigger and bigger. And they aren't going away. I'm scared, Yuri. It's making me think of... Guys, guys! As new Atsuki bursts in, Sayori forces a smile back under her face. What's Monica's favorite food? Huh? W what? It's squid. You know why? Utterly bewildered, why did Natsuki ask the question if she already knew the answer? Uh, it's in her name, Monika. Ah, it's a pun. <laughs> a nice play on words. Eh, good one, Natsuki. <laughs> I was just thinking about the festival on the way here, and it came to me. So, what were you two talking about? Excuse me. Sorry, gets up and moves to another seat at the back of the room. What? What was that all about? Uh, sorry, I said it was a secret, so I don't think I should answer. But then what do I say? Uh, I, I think I'll go read my book now. And as I turn away to find another seat, I catch a glimpse of a confused and hurt look on Natsuki's face. <laughs> um, yeah, so, sorry. Um, yeah, Natsuki interrupting at an inopportune time. Um, as you might have guessed, Sayu was about to confide that she she's thinking of killing herself. <clears throat> um, at least that's what I'm, I was int intending to imply there. Um, yeah, uh, that's Sayuri and Yuri's little heart-to-heart -heart moment there. I, uh, I've, I've long felt that Sayuri and Yuri have, have a lot in common, and I, I really wanted to give them that, that little moment there. Um, you know... You know, just just to make the tragedy all that worse. You know, just because I'm a little you know, bastard that way. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> uh, once I'm seated again, I glance at her over my book, but she's back to wearing the usual sour expression. She goes to the closet to retrieve some manga. I can't help feeling badly about how I'm handling things today. I may have made Sayuri feel worse, and I may have ruined my newfound truce with Natsuki. I'm feeling the absence of my knife more in this moment than I have all day. Social situations are already confusing enough to navigate when there aren't secrets involved, too. I may just have to make up some social skills as I, some social skills as I go along. But for now, I need this moment to distress myself by reading my book. Just then, Monica and Tormuz enter the room, one after the other. Are you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club, and now picking up piano. <laughs> well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival, too. Ah, I can't wait for the festival! Natsuki has a real habit of barging into conversations, doesn't she? I feel frustrated. Her my frustration is with Natsuki's interruptions, though it's hard to stay mad at her when she's smiling for once. Mostly I'm feeling frustrated with myself. 
I can barely be sociable when I'm talking to one person. When there's more than one, I don't have a chance. I've lost the thread of the conversation already. But I need to focus on controlling my features and my breathing to hide what I'm feeling. I'm sure that frustration would be an inappropriate emotion to show right now. I wonder if I should try talking to Sire again. She seemed like she had something important to say. And if the way she's, she feels is anything like how I feel, I would be worried that she might think of hurting herself. Uh, but of course, I know she wouldn't do that. Don't be so sure, Yuri. <laughs> Whatever is troubling her, she's obviously nowhere near as broken as I am. Yuri actions aren't as fun as Yuri's and Sayuri's anyway. Excuse me. Where is Sayuri anyway? Oh, there you are. Termes walks over to where Sayuri is sitting at the back of the room. Oh. I suppose I should have expected that. The woebegone look on her face is painfully obvious, even from a distance. She's so visibly lost in her thoughts that Termes has to wave his hand in front of her face to get her attention. I become conscious of the fact that I've been spent too long watching them. Uh, I should get back to my book, or at least pretend to. As much as I enjoy watching people, people invariably accuse me of staring and calling me creepy. I really haven't made much headway in my reading lately. I've been too distracted these past few days, and today is no different. Today, I confirmed what I have always suspected, a Sairi is depressed, and no one knows about it. On some level, it feels good that for once, I'm more socially aware about something than everyone else. But at the same time, I do feel bad for Sairi's predicament. I know well what it's like to have a sense of nameless dread eating away at me. I wish I could have talked to her some more, but it's probably just as well, since Tormies will obviously know better what to say to her than I would. And they're so close, she'd be far more likely to confide in him than me. <laughs> Yeah, um, obviously there's some dramatic irony uh, going on here that, you know, Termius, I mean, MC has no clue how to talk to her, um, and um, Yuri just being naturally hard on herself, as she always is, just assumes that everyone's better than her. Um, so in addition to the dramatic irony, there's sort of a lesson in this that um, you know if you encounter someone who's you know that degree of trouble that that depressed um, one you you okay this is this is kind of this is kind of getting into the territory that my previous mod Cyrus says no to suicide I uh, got into that uh, it is it is actually important to ask if they're thinking of killing themselves uh, it's a hard question to ask but it is important to ask and don't assume that someone else is going to do it because you know if someone seems to be like in a position that they're ready to confide in you um you might not be able to count on someone else to to, uh, to, to help them uh you know you might be it you know <laughs> um even if you aren't that close to them um so I guess I guess this is a plug for my other mod. Sire says no to suicide because I I, uh, I uh, in that mod um, I, I give a lot of uh, detail about how to approach someone who's suicidal, what questions to ask, and um, you know how to keep them safe. Um, I'm not going to get into all the details right now. I'm just I, I, I'm. I'm prattling on too much as it is I'm gonna go move on um, anyway moving on uh, in fact seeing how concerned he looks for her I wonder could he have romantic feelings for her in fact now that I think about it during our conversation today Sairi seemed saddest when she talked about Tormuse could it be that she has romantic feelings for him too that thought makes me feel something unpleasant is this jealousy now I remember, I felt it on the first day I met, I met Tormuse. I felt it when Sai was hugging Tormuse. And I also felt it when Monica tried to talk, talk him out of helping me with the tea. Does this mean, do I have romantic feelings for Tormuse? Suddenly, all my emotions are in turmoil as I contemplate this. That would suggest that I was feeling it right from the first time I met him. Could it have been love at first sight? Uh, that sounds like something out of children's books. I thought it was just a myth, and yet I wonder. My mind is racing with possibilities. Can my friendship with Tormius develop into a romantic relationship? That thought feels simultaneously terrifying and exhilarating. I've never seriously con contemplated being in such a relationship with someone. It's nice to fantasize about sometimes, but it's the same as a friendship in that it's just something that other people do, or maybe characters in my books, but now, I feel like I'm closer to having it than I've ever been in my life. 
Uh, suddenly, I'm conscious of the fact that I'm gripping my book too hard. I'm going to damage it if I'm not careful. I take some deep breaths, trying to calm myself, trying to regain my focus. I don't really know how I would go about pursuing romance. I don't even know how to pursue friendship. I guess I shall have to look to Tormius for clues about what to do next. I glance at him again. He's talking to Monica now. They're both repeatedly looking at Sairi with concerned expressions. It's obvious that they're talking about her. Now Monica is going over to talk to Sairi. That's good. She'll know what to say. I feel reassured that Sairi is in good hands. <laughs> That's for Tormius. Oh dear. Yeah. More dramatic irony. Um, there, there is. I, I don't. As far as I know, there is no actual canon explanation of what Monica is talking to Sairi. But the popular head canon is that Monica is telling Sairi to kill herself there, or at least in some way subtly encouraging her to get to kill herself since that's what ends up happening um so yeah this is sort of more of the same um don't count on uh, don't count on others to help help people through it if they're going through trouble times uh which is which which also doesn't doesn't mean you should take on everyone's burdens and save everybody i'm just i'm just saying if you find yourself in such a circumstance um you, you could be in a position that no one else is. I guess is what I'm saying. Anyway, I'm, I'm rattling on too much again. I gotta move on. Okay. okay. <clears throat> he's taken a seat by himself. He looks like he's in deep thought. I really hoped that he would come talk to me like he has the past two days, but it's easy to guess why he didn't. He's thinking about Sairi. And with that, all thoughts of romance with him evaporate. I feel silly for having considered it. Obviously, if he had to choose, he would go with his lifelong friend instead of me. But... That's okay though, right? Because he and I are still friends. I just have to remind myself that I'm lucky to have him as a friend. So I suppose that means that I should try to be the best friend that I can be. And perhaps that means helping Tormuse and Sairi get together, even if it hurts a bit. An unmistakable wave of sadness passes over me as I think about it. But it's okay, I'm, I'm long used to dealing with pain. I steal myself for what I know will probably be a difficult conversation with Tormuse. Uh, that is, if he ever gets around to talking to me. Just as I'm thinking that, he looks over at me. Our eyes meet, and I become conscious of the fact that I've been staring at him the whole time. Uh, I turn my attention back to my book, trying to look inconspicuous, but I have trouble hiding how anxious I'm feeling as he walks over and takes a seat next to mine. I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, he didn't even do anything. But I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How are you even able to tell that I was thinking like that? Well, it's something that I do a lot, so it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. N not that I was staring at you or anything. I didn't do anything creepy like that. Uh, someday I hope to learn to be more discreet. In any case, I guess you were right. Sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Like a friend. Of course... There are certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping to themselves, but if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Ah, uh, it's really not that big a deal. I was just feeling a bit uneasy about Sairi. Sairi? Yeah, she seems a little off today, but when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh? That's quite romantic. Eh? Judging by his expression, that was the wrong thing to say. Uh, so, sorry, I didn't mean to say something stupid. Uh, it's not that, I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Sire and I just have just been friends for a long time, that's all. Ah, I see. Hmm. He's talking about his friendship as if it precludes the possibility of it developing into romance. And what could it mean if Sire didn't tell him how she feels? I'll have to be very careful about how I approach this. This might be something she wants to keep secret from him. Then, perhaps it is unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just reading into it a little too much. Tormies? The world is full of, it's full of meaning, often hidden deep beneath plain sight. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you may know them. Ah, so you think there might be something behind it after all? Hmm, careful, careful. I think that Sairi is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what may be going on inside her head, and she may not always know what she wants. I noticed her strange behavior today, too, and I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? 
I watch his reaction closely. Well, I guess that was the case. Sorry. I find I quite, can't quite make eye contact with him now. She really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Uh, I, I guess, but you don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. He's so insistent about saying they're friends. Can I be wrong about his romantic feelings? I look closely at him again, looking for some sign either way. It could be that, like me, his feelings are buried so deeply he doesn't fully know what he's experiencing. Or perhaps he doesn't want to admit how he feels to me? I wish there was some easy way for me to know for sure. He turns away from me, looking embarrassed. It's possible I'm s spending too long staring at him again. Sometimes, a person's mysteries are untold even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware were in you. I know it's going to hurt to say this, but I have to say it. That That is, I think that she would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. I don't know if he even cares how I feel about it, but at least he knows he has my blessing if he wants to pursue her. Yuri, you're giving me too much credit. I'm a pretty simple guy, so I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. Not nearly as sophisticated as you. Uh, that's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. Yeah, I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyway. It's clear that he wants to drop the subject, so I oblige. Not sure how I feel about the resolution of this conversation. It makes me feel preoccupied as I prepare tea for ourselves. It makes me forget to object when he chooses seats for us. Uh, but at least I make sure I'm sitting on the left this time. And I find that if I angle myself inwards towards him a little, I can avoid accidental contact with my injured breast. It also brings my right leg in contact with his left leg. But I'm too preoccupied to fully enjoy the contact between our legs. As we sit with the book between us, my thoughts and emotions swirl inside of me. I value my friendship with Tormuz, I really do. It shouldn't feel like a sense of loss if he wants a Sire more than me. And yet, I can't help feeling a sense of desire to have him all to myself. Am I being selfish? Is it wrong for me to feel this way? I can't tell which is worse, the feeling of loss or the feeling of guilt. If Sairi is feeling the same way, then I think I fully understand why she's so upset. Wouldn't it be wrong for me to take Tormis away from her? I don't know what to do. I think it's time to reassess my situation, my priorities, and options. Option 1. I confess to Tormis what, that I have romantic feelings toward him. This could result in forever, life-changing experiences that are beyond my comprehension. But I don't actually know how he feels about me, uh, so I may end up just making a fool out of myself. And it could ruin my friendship with him, and with Sairi. And in any case, it could end any chances of him finding happiness with her. Option two, I remain friends with Tormuse, and help him get together with Sairi. This could help Sairi get out of the depression spiral that she's in. I think that would make me feel good, knowing that I helped her and I would be able to remain friends with her. A second friend would obviously be twice as wonderful. But would I be able to deal with this jealousy that I'm feeling every day? It might poison whatever friendship I have with either of them. Would I be able to put that feeling behind me? I don't know. I don't have enough experience with these emotions to predict my own reactions. There's so much uncertainty in either of these choices with obvious possible benefits and drawbacks to both. I need a third option. Option three. I don't make my intentions obvious either way, and I wait for Tormuse to make a decision, or at least reveal his own intentions. In some ways, this feels like the most sensible option, but I don't, oops, but I don't, sorry. But I don't know how long I'll be able to keep these emotions beneath the surface. And if they get any stronger, I think they may eat me alive. I feel like I want to move things forward in some way. I don't like all this uncertainty. I think, I need to start doing a lot more disclosure about myself to help Tormuse make a decision, and in so doing, help me make a decision. Yes, the more I think about it, the more I feel like this is the best option. I summon up all my courage and get ready to talk to Tormuse, but when I look over at him, I stop myself when I see the intense expression on his face. He's so focused on reading that there are visible beads of sweat breaking out on his forehead. He must be really into the book. I can't blame him, this is a good part. I suppose I'll just have to talk to him later, maybe when we're sharing poems. Okay, everyone. Michael like always has a very affected way of saying that phrase. It's enough to pull me out of the deepest reverie. Why don't we share poems now? 
As Termes is putting the book away, I realize something. My right breast has been partially obscuring his view of the book the whole time we were reading. I hope it didn't bother him. I suppose I can take it as a sign of his kindness that he didn't complain about it. But it makes me all the more nervous about all the sharing I'm about to do. I feel my heart pounding as I mentally and emotionally prepare myself for it. I just keep telling myself that it will be okay. And I get interrupted by Tormius handing me his poem. Um, I did get one complaint that that section is too long. But I'm really fond of that section. Because, like, that whole segment, what, when they're reading together, and the one before that, when she's sitting there reading by herself, and uh, and everyone's, you know, talking to Sari at the same time, uh, like... Um, it just, that, I feel like this scene more than any other shows how active Yuri's mind is because she's going through this whole roller coaster of emotions and he's just like going through like anxious and ah oh no what if oh no uh, and, and meanwhile she's just the whole time she's just sitting there reading like to any outside observer she's just sitting reading um, and that's, that's that's this is basically this is the life of Yuri in a nutshell this scene that um, from ev from everyone else's perspective that's Yuri off in the corner reading, as always. Meanwhile, her mind is just going constantly. <laughs> you know? Um, so, yeah, I, I, I just, I, I really like that, this, this scene just for that reason. Even, even though nothing happens, it, it's just, it's just, it's just all Yuri being Yuri. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, Oh yeah, and and of course the little bit at the end. Um, there's there's no there's no dialogue for any of it in the original game. It's just eh, let's go read for a while, and then they read for a while, and then Monica goes, okay, read poems now. Um, so I just added in the the bit about her boob getting in the way, just because it amused me to do so. <laughs> and it's. It's so it's so um, in keeping with the genre, you know, date simulator where, like, you know, <laughs> I'm not that not that I know about these things, not that I play date simulators or anything, but that's that's sort of the stereotype, I guess. <laughs> you know, the girls being unaware of how they look. Anyway, moving on, <laughs> um, being, you know, being unintentionally sexy or whatever. Um, <laughs> I suppose my sharing can wait for a bit. His poem is as delightful as I've come to expect from him. A giddy smile across my face and stays there the whole time I'm reading it. I particularly like the part where he made a rhyme with effulgent. <laughs> Love that bit. <laughs> yeah, effulgent being one of Yuri's words, of course. A contented sigh escapes me as I hand it back to him. Tormuse. Your writing has only improved in these last few days. Every poem you've shown me has been nothing short of spectacular. I can really feel the emotions. I'm a little envious, even. I don't think it ever came to me this naturally. Yuri, that's the wrong way to put it. This never did come naturally to me, but I've been able to improve so much thanks to you. You're really the example I was chasing after. Is that so? At the moment, I don't think I could stop smiling even if I tried. That's good. It will make this conversation easier. This feeling... I'm so glad I got the chance to share my writing. I never thought it would feel like this. I remember you mentioning that yesterday. I can't believe that you're so good at something you've never even shared it with anyone. It's kind of a shame. Maybe, but it's not like I really had a choice. What do you mean? Well, I feel my smile falter. I know I'm about to touch on some very painful topics. Tormius, during lunchtime I ate by myself. Did you know that? It's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always have some books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading. Well, that's one way to put it anyway, but... Books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. People you want to fall in love with, or people you just know would make a really good friend. Cheerful people who always put a smile on your face. Or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day. You know? I hesitate. I suppress the encroaching wave of sadness I feel coming. And those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my body type. And... And they don't hit me. And they don't hate me for acting like a know-it-all. Yeah, sure. no, that was a bit of foreshadowing there. <laughs> That's... That, uh... 
that line is intentionally like out of nowhere there. Um, it's building to something later. <clears throat> People say that about you? I'm not a know-it-all, no, Toy Muse. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I'm determined to keep a smile on my face. I'm not going to give in to the sadness. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to think about my knives. I have to share this with them. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings, and all I can do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you that I really understood what was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No, that's wrong. Just being patient and respectful, that's really important to me. It's all coming out, all my insecurities. It feels incredibly emotionally draining to say all this out loud, but I can't stop now. I know I'm a difficult person, Tormies. I speak too slowly, I second guess myself all the time, I read too deeply into things, but every time, you've always treated me just like anyone else. It's so rare to, that I feel my comfortable with myself when I talk to others, but that's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And if other people don't see it that way, then screw them. I mean, I joined this club hoping I would make friends. And I would say I've had at least one success. Wouldn't you? Uh, um... Focus, focus, focus. Keep breathing, keep breathing. It's okay. I feel like I just died a little, but it's okay. Being friends is still a good thing, right? A week ago, I didn't even know what it was like to have a friend. I just have to keep reminding myself that this is a good thing. So it wouldn't be right for me to feel like crying right now. Anyway, this is what I agree with myself to do. Termi's just made his intentions clear. He and I are friends. And I should let go of this silly dream of romance. If you put it that way, yeah, we really are friends now, aren't we? Despite myself, I feel tears welling up in my eyes. I desperately hide my face in my hands so he doesn't see. I'm determined to keep my smile on my face. Do you want to show me your poem? Yeah, I do. Uh, let me get it for you. Turning away from him to face my bag gives me the opportunity to collect myself. Keep calm. Keep breathing. Act normal. Act normal. It's okay. It's okay. Everything is going to be okay. My hands shake slightly as I bring out my special poem that I wrote for Tormuse. I still can't quite bring myself to look at him as I hand it to him. As he's reading it, my thoughts swirl around me and around inside me again. Did I do something wrong? Did I share too much? Did I share too early? Or was it inevitable that he would have no romantic interest in me? I feel like I just experienced a missed opportunity, even though I don't know for sure if there was ever an opportunity to begin with. I'm having trouble reconciling my feelings. It isn't exactly pleasant, but it isn't truly a sense of loss either. I still have my friend, I value him, and he values me. That's still more than I've ever had before. Most importantly, whatever I'm feeling doesn't seem to be evoking the desire to cut myself, so I suppose I can take that as a good sign. That thought in itself helps me breathe more easily. And just how does he feel about Sairi? I feel like I haven't confirmed that. Suddenly I become aware that Tormis is handing the poem back to me. Did he decide he doesn't want it? I find it harder than ever to make eye contact. Do you dislike it? Uh, no, of course not. I just don't really know how I should respond. Somewhere within my swirling thoughts, I remember that he hasn't shown himself to be very good at interpreting the meanings of my poems. I try to recall the giddy feeling I had when I wrote it yesterday, but it feels so far away from my confused jumble of emotions right now that I doubt I could put it into words. I, I don't know if I'll be able to explain this one. That's fine. I understand this one. I glance in his direction. Does he truly understand what it means to me? Does this one mean a lot to you? I nod. I can't seem to find my voice. I'm not really good with words, but I'm happy that you shared it with me. So thank you. And I hope we keep spending time together. I hope so too. Why can't I say the words? I just smile. It's all I can manage. Why is he still handing it to me? Oh, oh right. I forgot to tell him that the poem's a present for him. It's like my voice has stopped working. I will have to try to communicate non-verbally. I reach both hands toward him. I take his hands in mine. The time I spend holding his hands seems to stretch into eternity, though it might actually only be a few seconds. But the energy that is seemingly crackling between us seems to be slowly rejuvenating me. 
He still looks confused as I gently but firmly push his hand, still holding the poem, back toward him. You can... um... The, the poem is... You mean I can keep it? I nod. I'd love to. He's loved to. At those words, my jumbled thoughts straighten out a little. I've become increasingly conscious of how long I've gone without speaking. There's still a lot that I want to say to him that I doubt I'll ever get the chance to express. But I'll settle for the most important thing right now. You always... You always make me feel nice. I, I know I'm not good with people, but... I hope that I can return the favor sometimes. Yeah. Don't worry. I think you do a good job. I finally feel calm enough to properly turn back toward him. I guess we should move on before Monica says something. But I'm sure we can talk again later. Yeah, I'm sure we will. As he is putting my gift away, I go back to my bag to pull out my beach poem. I approach Sayuri. She still looks downcast. I don't know if I can handle another emotionally draining conversation right now. But I remember my commitment to my friend, and I try to summon up what energy I can. Hi, Sayuri. Are you feeling any better? She shrugs. She speaks in a low monotone. Everyone keeps asking me if I'm okay. First you, then Toymuse, then Monica. I'm the one who's supposed to be cheering people up, not the other way around. It's bittersweet that people want to try, but it doesn't feel right. Bittersweet. It's a good word to describe the way I feel about my conversation with Toymuse. <laughs> I shouldn't have come today. Everything's just getting worse and worse. Yuri, is there, is there anything that helps? Like, what do you do when you're, what do you do when you're depressed? I, I cut myself, but I can't say that. What do I say instead? She's looking at me, hopefully and expectantly. I, I would feel hypocritical recommending, recommending she see a doctor when I have trouble doing it myself, or recommending that she take medication. I've always been uncomfortable with the idea of taking antidepressants. The idea of taking something that changes the way I think and feel is unappealing, to say the least, because it raises all kinds of philosophical questions about what is really me. But I don't know how to articulate all of this, and several seconds have passed, and she's still waiting for my answer. I'm sorry, Sairi. I don't have an answer for you. Oh. The look of hope visibly dies. Well. Um, maybe I should just read your poem. Ah, uh, of course. I hand her my poem and she reads it without any change in her downcast expression. She hands it back to me without looking at me. It's nice, Yuri. It's... it's nice. An awkward silence hangs between us, still racking my brain for something to say. One thing that helps me is writing. Externalizing my emotions and capturing them on paper helps me analyze them and understand myself. <clears throat> I'm wondering if that is something you might find helpful. Without hesitation, Sairi shakes her head. <clears throat> uh, you seem surprisingly certain that it wouldn't help. Yuri, I... I have a confession to make. I didn't write a poem for today. I mean, I tried. I, I sat down to write it, but oh, and I tried to write about my feelings. I just ended up crying all evening yesterday. Were you thinking about Tormuse? The words were out of my mouth before I realized it. I guess I'm still thinking of setting them up together. When she doesn't reply, I press on. You know, Tormuse and I are friends. Just friends. I finally understand what Monica meant when she used that phrase. I let my words hang in the air between us, hoping Sairi picks up on the meaning. Whether she does or not, I can't tell, but she still isn't replying. May I ask how you feel about him? I... I don't know. I don't understand what I'm feeling. Well, then perhaps that's extra reason to talk to Tormuse about it. She shakes her head again. I just wish things could go back to the way they were. Why can't they? He doesn't even want to walk home with me after school. He doesn't? I thought you walk home together every day. He'd rather go with... Uh, never mind. I should go. We should... We, we should move on now. Very well. She walks away with a glassy-eyed expression. Uh... Okay. Um... Yeah, continuing with my developer's commentary. Uh, lot, lots going on in this, in this segment here. Um... 
yeah, there's there's a lot. Um, like things like like the, that comment about medication. That's 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 me. Um, I mean, I, I have I have taken antidepressants in the past, um, but it, it, it took me a while to get around to making the decision to take antidepressants because of that whole notion. Like, I don't know. Um, maybe it's me overthinking things. Uh, which, by the way, overthinking is like one of the hallmarks of depression because um, overthinking is what makes thoughts spiral into negative places or, or and it's also for same thing with anxiety but any, any negative emotion really I mean that's negative emotions feed themselves um, you know thinking about something you're nervous about it makes you more anxious thinking about something you're sad about makes you more depressed uh, I think every, I think everyone's had the experience of uh, thinking about something that made you angry and it just goes just makes you angrier. You know, that's like, yeah, it's, that's just that's just. Um, anyway, I'm getting totally sidetracked. My point is, um, yeah, overthinking is it's you know the, the, the curse that accompanies depression, or, or, or maybe it's the other way around. Depression is the other curse that accompanies overthinking. Um, um, but, but yeah, uh, I, I really struggle with that notion of if this is changing me, am I still me? Um, maybe, I, maybe that sounds pretentious. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, antidepressants can help, you know, um, they don't actually have to change you. They can just take the edge off the lows so they don't go so low. Um, in, in my case, it uh, made the background anxiety feeling get replaced by a background fuzzy feeling. Um, so uh, I mean, it, it helped me get, get through my days. Um, so I mean, I, I, I'm off them now. Um, uh, ultimately, I, I wasn't fond of the side effects, and I, I, was, I got to a place where I felt like I didn't need them anymore. Um, but uh, but yeah, um, they're they're worth considering. Honestly, um, I, I I recommend it. Like like, yeah, like like yeah. Statistically speaking, therapy is better than medication, uh, and therapy together with medication is best. Um, but you know, don't just count this medication. It can it can it can help. I guess is my message here. And, and the other thing going on is. Uh, I'm feeding into the fact that uh, this, this is playing as if the player is uh, doing the Yuri route. So, um, uh, so the player said, they'd go, go home with Yuri instead of Sairi in, in the, uh, at the end of day three. Anyway, moving on. <clears throat> I have no idea what to make of this. Could I have handled it better? In any case, it's time to go to Monica. Monica is smiling as usual, but there's an unmistakable tension about her. Hi, Yuri. Having a good day today? Uh, you could say today is bittersweet for me. Oh? Anything you want to talk about? Well, let us just say it's had some ups and downs. I'm not sure how to feel about it yet. All right, let me know if there's anything I can do to help. In the meantime, here's my poem for today. She presents me with her poem entitled The Lady Who Knows Everything. It's about an omniscient lady with decidedly cynical views. It conveys a feeling that knowing everything has removed her sense of purpose in life. This is about the epiphany again, isn't it? Maybe? It's sounding like the knowledge you gained from it has made you lose hope. Is that right? <clears throat> well, <laughs> I have to be careful how I answer that one. Don't get me wrong, I believe that learning and seeking answers are what give life meaning. I never want to stop learning. But at the same time, I can't help thinking about that saying, ignorance is bliss. In a weird sort of way, I envy you for not knowing what I know. Because I learned something that was rather disheartening. I recall Monica's previous two poems, imagining how this one might fit in context, the first conveying a feeling of being trapped, and the second a feeling of torment. The tone of this one doesn't sound any better. I realize I'm spacing out again, but Monica doesn't seem to notice. She's looking over at where Sairi is talking to Tormies. Well, I happen to value knowledge and learning very highly, so it would seem that we are on the same page, as it were, in that respect. I admit, I can't imagine what you could possibly have learned that could be as life-changing as it sounds, yet not worth learning. Can you at least tell me 
Has your er, situation improved since we last spoke? <sighs> it's hard to say. But really, I'm just doing what has to be done. I guess you could say I am seeing signs of progress. And right now, it's just a matter of waiting and seeing what happens. Then I'm glad to hear it. I hope things work out for you, to Monica. Thanks. How about I take a look at your, look at your poem now? Now, that. I am hand her my poem as she, as she reads it. Hmm, that's different. She hands it back to me. I see you decide to be a little more philosophical today. But then again, so did I. I guess we're just in that kind of mood. Though I have to say, I wouldn't have thought the beach is your style. Well, it wasn't exactly my idea. It wasn't. Natsuki and I decided to write about the same topic to see how our styles compare. It was her idea. I just went along with her request. I was under the impression that you, the two of you uh, don't get along well. Well, uh, I'm really not sure what the present state of Natsuki's feeling about me is. I wouldn't say that we're close. In fact, I would say that our relationship is tumultuous at best which is why I felt it important to go along with this exercise to build better relations, especially after, uh, after your fight the other day. Yes. Well, 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 it seems there's more to you than I expected. Thanks for sharing, Yuri. You always manage to make things entertaining. Uh, thanks. That was a rather curious choice of words, but in any case, it seems that we're done now. It's time to move on to Natsuki. Um, Comment I, one comment I want to make about that is that um, um, in case you hadn't figured it out, slight spoiler, Monica's self-aware. She knows it's a game, and um, she's trying to get close to the player. Um, I, I'm, I'm sort of playing on the same sort of idea that um, uh, another mod, uh, mod author, Sukadev, did with Rain Clouds, which was uh, um, DDLC from Sire's point of view, uh, and he also made new eyes, which is DDLC from Yuri's point of view. I had the idea first. Uh, <laughs> um, but, uh, no, I, I, anyway, I, I, I um, yeah, but he, he did this sort of meta thing of Monica's still trying to get to MC even though he isn't, in the, he isn't actually the main character um, he, or he isn't the perspective character in this mod. Um, so Monica's still looking over at MC, uh, trying to get close to him and in so doing getting close to the player. Uh, that's why she keeps looking at him and that's why she's feeling so conflicted right now because this is at this point she's already started altering Sairi and she like I think I think she feels a little guilty about it like she had to she had to push herself to get to this point up uh, this is this is the first day this is the first time she's actually tried altering the code um so yeah she's, she feels conflicted about that and that line about uh you managed to make things entertaining I feel like Monica has to find some entertainment value in this whole poem sharing thing. Otherwise, why would she do it? Like, why would she play along with this whole charade? She, she has to be on some level uh, entertained by it, or at least trying to find some entertainment value in it. Um, so that's why I'm, what I'm sort of playing on here. Uh, anyway, I'm here I go rambling again. It's time to move on to Natsuki. I wonder if I should apologize for earlier, or at least try to explain, or would that make things even more awkward? I wish that just once I could approach her without feeling nervous. Natsuki, I, I'm sorry for earlier. I didn't mean to make you feel neglected. Nah, it's fine. I should have realized that you and Sai were having a moment or whatever. I'm, uh... I'm kind of realizing that I act immature sometimes. Well... It's understandable, considering that you're the youngest one in the club. Thanks for reminding me. I think that was sarcasm. Anyway, the point is, I shouldn't have barged in like that, so... I'm sorry. I think that's the first time I've, I've heard Snotsky use that word. Thank you. I accept your apology. And I hope we can continue to develop the rapport we established yesterday. Uh, sure, Yuri. How about we have some rapport with our poems now? She hands me your poem entitled, I'll Be Your Beach. It describes the beach in idealized terms as a place of beauty and gives strong hints of a romantic liaison. It makes me ache with longing all over again to know what it's like to experience that and also makes me curious about Natsuki's romantic life. 
I wonder if it would be too personal a question to ask. But then again, I seem to be on a roll with personal questions lately. Well done, Natsuki. There's some very vivid imagery here. Hey, thanks. Your poem evokes some rather romantic feelings. Is it, uh, a reflection of your own experience? Oh, I, uh, geez, did you have to go there? Uh, not exactly. I mean, it's nice to dream, you know? Not all of us get to cozy up to Tormuse, right? Sticking your boobs in his face was a neat trick. I wish I could do that. Not that I was staring at you or two or anything. This conversation is taking a very uncomfortable turn. Th that was unintentional, I swear. <laughs> sure, Yuri. Well, anyway, Tormuse and I are just friends. If anything, I'd say that romance would be more likely between Tormuse and Sairi. Huh? Really? It's a rather gossipy thing for me to say, and probably inappropriate. I want to turn the conversation away from myself. Yes, well, I can't say for certain, but the way they talk about each other seems to indicate they feel very strongly about one another. Yeah, now that you mention it, I guess I can see that. And they know each other a while, right? Who knows what they get up to when no one's around? Maybe they even... Never mind. I don't want to picture that. Uh, so anyway, how about I read your poem now? <laughs> I hand her my poem. A smile comes over her face as she reads it. <laughs> I knew it. You just couldn't resist making it fancy. You really like the word tendrils, don't you? <laughs> Fun fact. Three out of four uh, Yuri poems in the Act 1 have the word tendrils in them. She really does like the word tendrils. <laughs> anyway. Um, uh, I feel nervous again. Does she mean that in a negative way? It's okay. I like it. It's good. I'm just glad we got the chance to do this. I feel relieved. Better than relieved, actually. Perhaps this can be the start of a more positive re relationship with Natsuki. Think back to my earliest impressions of her. How erratic she seemed. How much I wondered what her personal story was. I imagined myself getting closer to her to find out, even though it seemed impossible. Just how do normal people navigate so social situations like that? How did my friendship with Tormi start? I think he just declared us friends, and that was it. Is that how it works? Can we be friends? I freeze, terrified. I I'm sure that was the wrong thing to say. Panic spreads through me. I I'm already cursing myself for that mental lapse. Whoa, Yuri, I I'm a little weirded out right now. I I'm sorry. I start fidgeting uncontrollably with my hair. I, I, I didn't mean it. I, I take it back. I'm, I I'm just making a fool of myself. Uh. This is how it starts. This is how it always starts. People call me weird, and then comes laughing at me, and then taunting me, and then, and then things I don't want to think about. I thought I could be safe here, uh, but I've ruined it now. Everything's ruined forever. I hate myself. I want to punish myself for being so stupid. My mind fills with images of all my knives in my collection, of all the things I want to do to myself with them. Slap. Yuri, will you quit freaking out? Seriously, get a grip on yourself before people start staring at us. I didn't say no, okay? Jeez. Get a grip. I grip my forearm. I grip it hard until it hurts. I'm still shaking. I'm still struggling to control my breathing. But it isn't as bad as it was a few seconds ago. Maybe I should get Natsuki to slap me every time I feel like this. Your words are slowly filtering their way into my mind. Does this mean things are okay? Natsuki is nervously looking around the room. Look, uh, what's your phone number? Your question catches me off guard. I never actually use my phone. I only have it around for emergencies, but I do have the number memorized just in case. I stammer out the number to her as she enters it into her own phone. Great. I'll text you later. Just try to relax. And with that, she walks away without looking at me. I'm left standing there, still trying to recover my composure. What just happened? I'm very confused. Okay, you three. Um... I think this is a good note to end on. Uh, I, I, I mean, up to this point, I've been keeping it to one in-game day per episode, but um, it's close to an hour, and the next day is shorter than others. So I think I can do the end of the end of this day and then all of the following day in one episode. So yeah, I think this is a good a good note to end on. Um, yeah, there's. Um, yeah, again, lots happening in this in this bit here. Um, I like I try I try to pack as much into every scene as I can. Like I, I don't want I don't want any filler. I don't want any mundane moments. I I want like 
I want everything to contribute in some way. Either it's contributing to the plot, to the story, to characterization, uh, to establishing motives. Um, but uh, but yeah, there are a number of things going on here. Um, some of which is foreshadowing things that are that are that would be spoilers that I don't want to talk about just yet. But I'll talk about them later. Um, but you know, things like ah, okay, well. Well, what I, what I will say is that this is a, a big point in um, like building the relationship between Yuri and Natsuki. Um, like they start they start this mod basically at each other's throats. Like they've never talked to each other, but they're just not happy with each other whenever they do, and it's like. Um, over the first four days is them slowly um, uh, you know, slowly realizing that they that they have more in common than they at first thought uh, and you're just learning how to how to get along and, and um, understand each other and so on um, also, that uh, that bit where Yuri's freaking out is is also is kind of autobiograph autobiographical. Um, I don't know if I should share this. Um, I, I, I just I was just in a similar circ circumstance back in high school. Um, it, I, 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 I didn't say can we be friends. I, I admitted to having a crush on you know a girl that I that I liked, and I was freaking awkward as hell. And she used those exact words. I'm kind of weirded out right now, and that made me panic. And I, I was like, ah, 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 I take it back. I'm making a fool of myself. Ah, never mind. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, which, by the way, don't ever do. Don't ever do that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, I mean, as nerve-wracking as that sort of experience is. Um, you know, I say that as an introvert who doesn't deal well with confrontation or talking about personal emotions and stuff. Um, I mean, I can smile about it and laugh at it in hindsight because that was a long, it was a while ago. Um, <clears throat> that makes me feel old to say it like that. Um, <laughs> but um, um, <clears throat> what am I saying here? Um, yeah, that's just that that moment of panic uh, was kind of kind of kind of autobiographical, and um, yeah, but it's better to just stick with your guns and uh, it, you know, if yeah, I have a question. You oh, you don't feel that the same way? Okay, um, sorry. I hope we can still. I don't know. Hope it doesn't make things awkward. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Awkwardness is another thing that feeds itself, by the way, <laughs> in addition to negative emotions. Um, the only on the awkwardness makes it more awkward, unfortunately. Um, sometimes you just have to just, just breeze past that that moment and just talk about something else and mutually agree to pretend it didn't happen. <laughs> sometimes that's all you can do. Uh, and, and just hope that the other person plays along. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, that backtracking of oh no, I made it fool myself. I'm sorry. Never mind. I take it back. Um, that just that just made everything more awkward, if, you know, for the re for the rest of high school between me and her. Um, hmm. uh, she's married now, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, not that I'm. What am I saying? Um, yeah, um, I'm just rambling now. Uh, like this, this is this is yeah. Anyway, this is a good moment time to end this recording. I'll continue another day. Uh, hopefully, my my um, channel doesn't implode from copyright complaints, even though they don't have any grounds because I absolutely have the right to use freaking Moonlight Sonata in my mod. It is. <laughs> It was composed by a 200-year dead composer. It is public domain. Um, 
so I should be fine. Um, but yeah, uh, until next time.